why you're not confident creating content for your personal brand. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Abigail. I'm a personal brand content creator and coach. I help female entrepreneurs explore, expand and express themselves to get visible and to make impact. You know you should be writing more blog posts or filming more videos, taking more photos or recording more podcasts, but you've become a professional procrastinator and an excellent excuse maker, which ultimately leads to you losing confidence in your own personal brand and worse, losing the attention of the relationships with the very people you want to be helping. The reason this is happening is because you don't have a system. I'm gonna share the five step system of content creation so you can build and grow and keep growing your personal brand confidence. Both your own confidence in your personal brand and your audience's confidence in you. So if you're ready to start creating and sharing content consistently that helps people, keeps them coming back to you for more and ultimately turns them into clients while at the same time increasing your confidence, then you're gonna love what I'm gonna share with you. Let's get stuck in. Planning. Rather than simply jumping into the deep end, you'd do well to take some time to plan your content out. Starting with planning your overall content plan for the midterm future, for example, the next six to 12 months will set you up with a strategy in place. From there, you can begin to plan the actual pieces of content that you're gonna create within the overall strategy. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Without your plans in place, you're more likely to veer off track and trail off with your consistency because you don't have clarity about the direction, the purpose, or the content. Clarity is one of the keys to confidence because it provides context. Also, the process of planning requires a different set of thought processes and energy states. It's future-based work, big picture thinking, where the act of creating the content is present moment focused and individual task orientated. Mixing these processes up makes for muddy waters. Creating. The next phase is the actual creation phase. The writing of the blog post, the taking of the photos, the filming of the videos, the recording of the audio, the designing of the graphics. This is your play session and should be approached in that way. If creating your content feels heavy, you're not going to do it well if you do it at all. Remember, perspective is everything when it comes to creating your content. This is the first step by which you can make a difference in people's lives and it relates to a subject matter that you're passionate and knowledgeable about. It's fun to create this content. Whether you realize it or not, the energy with which you create your content is palpable to your audience. Just like when you're speaking with someone on the phone, you can hear when they're smiling or not, regardless of the words they're saying. So it's important to make your creation phase a play date with yourself. Make it fun and easy and schedule it in as an appointment with yourself. Prepare the equipment you need and make your environment as conducive to creativity as possible. Have a ritual like lighting a candle or playing your favorite music to demonstrate the significance of this phase and allow the creativity to flow. Allow yourself to experiment and play without filtering. Just let it out and let it be messy. Processing. Once you've created your raw content, it's time to process it. And that might look like formatting your copy, editing your photos, videos, or audio files, or preparing your graphics. This is the phase where you refine what you've created and it's best done at least a day after you've finished the creation phase. This gives you some time and distance from your creations so that you can observe them with more objectivity to align your creations with your strategy. Because the act of creation is so personal and so messy when you look at your creations with fresh eyes or ears, you're more able to discern what fits with the intentions you had in the planning phase of the process and get it ready to share. Scheduling. The fourth phase is scheduling your content. Now you've prepared your content, it's time to share it with your audience. Depending on your content plan, you might have specific days that you intend to distribute content. You can either wait for those days and share the content manually, or schedule a scheduling session with yourself 
and use a scheduling tool to drip your content to the appropriate platforms at the appropriate times. Scheduling tools like Recurpost, Loomly, Zoho Social, SmarterQ and Hootsuite are some that I can recommend. These are some of my favorite scheduling tools, but there are several around and you'll need to find the one that works for you. Given that you put so much time and energy into the creation of your content, it would be an absolute shame to let it go unseen, unheard or unread because the majority of your audience didn't see your initial post. It's a full gone conclusion that only a small percentage of your audience will have seen that first post thanks to the nature of algorithms on the popular social media platforms. So it's up to you to keep sharing your content to give it the best chance of reaching the people you intend to help with it. Rather than feeling like you'll be annoying people by sharing the same content over and over, choose to see it as helping them by making sure they don't miss out on it. So that brings us to repurposing, the final phase of content creation. A lot of time and energy goes into creating long form content like writing blog posts, filming a video or recording a podcast. So you want to maximize the visibility of that content by breaking it up into smaller bite-sized chunks that lead back to the full content piece. For example, with this video that you're watching, I can break up the five phases of the content creation process into five different pieces of content that I can share over a period of weeks and months, and even as an evergreen piece of content on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Each time linking back to this particular video. And let me tell you, I've gone and done that. Go follow me and see how that happens. Another example could be taking quotes from your podcast recording and creating quote graphics. Then share those as individual Instagram posts and link back to the full podcast episode each time. So look at your content and see how you can repurpose it into smaller bite-sized pieces of content. As you can see, the five phases of content creation for your personal brand confidence are straightforward and easy to follow. I promise you, if you follow these steps consistently, you'll be creating and sharing content that will not only boost your own confidence in your personal brand, but it'll boost your audience's confidence in your personal brand because you represent someone who's reliable, trustworthy, and a resource of valuable content. Let me know if you follow these steps already or if there are some other steps that you skip or perhaps additional steps that I haven't mentioned. I'd love to hear and help you if I can. Drop your comments below. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and found what I shared useful. I make these videos because I genuinely want to help you build your personal brand confidence. Kindness is contagious, so please be so kind as to like, share, and comment. And if you haven't already, then subscribe to my channel. That way, karma can send more kindness your way. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, and remember to explore, expand, and express yourself.